It's a good question. I don't know if there's an obvious answer. Is Georgia going to have a superstar on offense this year? Brock Bowers was a superstar for Georgia over the last few years. The numbers are not necessarily like the most eye-popping ones out there. Part of that is because he's a tight end. Part of that is because of the way Georgia plays football. Partially because of the way Georgia plays football is why it's not as easy to pinpoint a superstar or next man up. There was excitement around George Pickens as a freshman, right? He wasn't a full-on superstar, but he was definitely a star. Nick Chubb, superstar. Sonny Michelle, superstar. DeAndre Swift flirted with superstar status. He was certainly another caliber of a football player that they had. Is there a guy like that on this 2024 Georgia Bulldog team? Lam McConkey, star for sure. Is there going to be one this year? Right? Kendall Milton had moments. Ole Miss, Georgia, Georgia, Georgia Tech in 2022. Uh, but towards the end of this past season, he, he had his moments and he had some superstar caliber plays. I don't know that there is a guy like that on Georgia in 2024. Or is it Carson Beck? That's the real question. Is the answer actually Carson Beck? Is you know is is it more obvious than I'm saying? And this guy is the Heisman favorite for a reason. It's because he is a superstar quarterback. I think Kirby made a few comments about Carson. Um, actually, I've got it pulled up right there. And he made some comments about Dominic Lovett. I feel like Dean and I hit on this a little bit over the last few days. Dominic Lovett's been really good in the spring. And to me, from what I've seen, because the media has gotten to see a little bit of spring so far, he he does. He looks like he's geared up to be George's best offensive player. I like Dylan Bell a lot. I think that the potential is through the roof there. I think the potential is high with a couple of the transfers in Trevor Etienne and, and Colby Young. Those are kind of the ones I teeter towards out of the four offensive transfers as the one, hey, you should be looking at them as a potential superstar. You know, Branson Robinson and, and Roderick Robinson, are they stars or are they going to be really important pieces in this backfield? Right? They don't, you can be both, you could be one or the other. I think that for the most part, this Georgia running back room to me looks like it's a committee. A committee that will most likely be led by Trevor Etienne, but a committee at that. Is there a thousand yard rusher? I don't know. Dejan Edwards and Kendall Milton were both close to it last season, right? 700-ish yards, 800-ish yards, and and Dejan getting 700-ish in 2022, right? I think that you can end up seeing that a little bit, but maybe it's a little bit more of a Trevor Etienne gets 1,000, and maybe the Robinsons each get 500, something like that. that. That might be something that you get. But Carson Beck, he might be the superstar of this Georgia not just the Georgia football offense, but the Georgia football team. And I mean, you know, Mark Malachi Starks is probably the most talented football player on the roster, but Carson Beck's a star. Does he have a star that he's getting the ball to as well? That's the question. Ryan Curley from Dog Post talking about Georgia's offense. It's an offense that looks like it's going to be really, really good again. Let's not get this wrong. Georgia's offense has been great. I'm knocking on the table. You're hearing that through the mic. It's been great. And it was great under Bobo last year. There were bad moments. And people remember the bad moments maybe more than they remember the good ones sometimes. Right? People are going to remember the Dylan Bell and Carson Beck mishap. Right? At their own 15-ish. In the SEC Championship game against Alabama. People will remember that and people will blame Bobo for that. Yes, whatever. Right? Bobo is a good offensive coordinator. They wouldn't have him in the spot if he wasn't. Don't. Oh, Ryan, they had James Coley there in the spot, and he wasn't. We're beyond that. And Kirby trusts James Coley to be back on his staff as the wide receiver coach. Colorful language from that guy. Just putting that out there. Um, it'll be interesting. He's coaching those wide receivers hard. That There is an element there. Um, but this offense has become more pass-heavy. It is a balanced offense, but it has become more pass-heavy recently I don't expect that to change because just because they don't have a Brock Bowers maybe and maybe Dominic Lovett doesn't end up being or Dylan Bell none of them end up being maybe quite as good as Levin Conkey um, from a impact standpoint right numbers wise lads numbers weren't crazy but from an impact standpoint dude made plays and dude made a lot of third down catches those guys can they be as good as that they don't they don't have that Dominic Lovett has that potential this is what he said about 
about Don, if you've already missed it. I'll keep this brief. The important parts about it, at least. So this far in the spring, I would say Dom has had a very good spring. He's had much more confidence in the in the offense. I think Carson has much more confidence in him. They're on the same wavelength. There's been days where Dom has been really dominant out there. Fast forward, he goes to say, I think Carson's really comfortable with him. So I'm pleased with where he's at. His physical toughness compares continues to improve. He's a guy who immediately kind of got it with Georgia. I thought that he seamlessly jumped into the Georgia offense. There were games where he was the leading receiver. There were games where he had the most catches. He, to me, was a little bit more of a safety blanket for Carson than people realized. He will be the check down guy this year. Maybe ETN gets a little bit of those duties. Maybe Dylan Bell gets a little bit of those duties. But the safety blanket, the guy where it's third down, it's third and four, it's third and six, it's third and seven, right? We need a quick out. We need a quick in. We need to just get these yards. Right now, my guess would be Dominic Lovett is probably going to end up being the go-to guy for those situations just because it seems like there definitely is chemistry building between Carson Beck and him. But Beck is the real superstar here, it seems. And this is what Kirby said about Carson. It's a work in progress. It's not where it needs to be. He says about everything. I would say that he's comfortable with guys he's thrown to the most, and we're trying to force the issues with the guys he has at pause. Dominic Lovett is turning into one of those guys he's thrown to the most now, having another offseason. Dylan Bell, Arian Smith, Ra Ra Thomas, Anthony Evans, right? Right now, and going back to what Kirby said, some of their reps come with the ones, some of them come with the twos. Right now, it's not just getting com- them comfortable with Carson, it's getting them more comfortable with the offense. And that, that's pretty much it as far as importance there. But he also talked about earlier this spring about how Carson, they trust him to throw guys open. They trust him to fit the ball in tight windows. They trust him to do the things that a really good quarterback can. They trust him to maneuver the pocket. He talked about how good Beck is at maneuvering the pocket. We saw all of those NFL traits on display throughout the year last year. He was just in his first year as a starter, right? As a 21, 22-year-old guy, his first year to start a year four of him being in college football, he finally gets his turn, but you've got to knock some of that rust off. It took him a few weeks to knock some of that rust off, but you saw him get better and better and just start slinging it, right? It, it takes some, like, for lack of better terms, it takes some, ah, oh, fine. It takes some guts. It takes some guts to do what he did at Auburn. It takes some guts to be as casual as it, it takes some chill to be like that calm against South Carolina. You go through against Tennessee. All sorts of moments. The guy can evade sacks. The guy maneuvers the pocket the way that a pro does. And he he trusts his arm and his instincts to make NFL types of throws. Go watch the Tennessee tape. Go watch the... Here are the games you need to go watch. Just go watch the clips of Carson Beck from this if you don't trust me that he has superstar potential. Reminds me a lot of Matt Ryan. Watch the Kentucky clips from last year. Watch Ole Miss and watch Tennessee. Those are probably the three main games that you really want to watch as far as just, whoa, I can't believe Carson Beck did that. I can't believe he made that throw. Against Kentucky, there's a throw to Marcus Rosemey Jackson that circles up over and over again where he puts it over a defender that's trailing Marcus in between and hits him right, right, right in the hands, drops it in there, even though a safety's coming up to hit Marcus Rosemey Jackson. It was a gorgeous pass. Against Tennessee, you watch him go through his reads. You see him make tight throws inside and outside the numbers. You see him have a command of the offense. Against against Ole Miss, lights it up. Against, against Kentucky, lit it up. Against Auburn, made crazy throws. Trusted Brock Bowers to make catches, right? Brock Bowers is making those one-hand catches. He got better as the year went on. You do expect there to be a jump. With chemistry with an offensive coordinator, the scheme carries over. It didn't carry over 100% because of the transition from Mike Bobo to, or from Todd Munkin to Mike Bobo, the transition from Stetson to Carson. Those things were muddy. Dominic Lovett, Arian Smith has star potential. Even if it's further away, it's there. Dylan Bell has it. His versatility is unquestioned. He can run the ball. He can catch the ball. He can throw the ball, right? But what's What's known is when he has the ball in his hands, he's a dangerous football player. Dylan Bell, 
I really like Dylan Bell. If, if he can figure it out and develop more as a wide receiver, obviously played running back in high school, has been developing and transitioning to a wide receiver throughout his career at Georgia. If he can develop his routes and, and his crispness, he'll be a real problem. Didn't mention any of the tight ends. I think it's a very good room. None of them are Brock Bowers. They can all be very good. They can all, I don't know, they, they're all capable of catching for six or 700 yards if they were given the opportunity. I just don't think that's going to happen. But the real superstar... Might end up being Carson Beck if it's not Dominic Lovett or Dylan Bell. Maybe they won't have a superstar. Doesn't mean that Georgia can't have an elite offense in 2024. Thanks for watching.